Hi! Um, I thought I would do a little talking video today. I actually saw a few videos recently on the evolution of my vintage style, and I thought that was really, not mine, but <laughs> they were called the evolution of my vintage style. And I thought that was really interesting because there are so many girls on YouTube now doing vintage tutorials and vintage style or pinup tutorials, and um, I really have enjoyed watching these videos myself, so I thought I would go back and look at photos and see if I thought that it would be interesting to do my own. And I, I don't know, I, I might be to some of you. I think it's really cool because I'm a bit older than a lot of the girls that are doing these videos on YouTube, so my style I feel like has changed and progressed even more um, and had even more transitions in it. I think one thing that the most of us that most of us who are into vintage style go through is we go through periods even within that style where we're trying to find ourselves. Um, there is going to be a lot. <laughs> there was a lot of times whenever I was first discovering retro reproduction um, that I was really thinking I wanted to do the pinup thing, and then there were times when I felt like, "Ooh, I want to go to the Betty Page route." And then I went through my journey to Grace, as most of you know, where I really wanted to channel Jit Grace Kelly, not only in my hair and makeup, but my everyday style. And I think I've settled into something that I think is going to be a little bit more long term for me, and I consider that I call it comfortably classic. I still absolutely love vintage style. I love vintage clothing and I will try always to add to my collection in that regard, but I'm also on a very limited budget. So a lot of what I have is um, modern pieces that I feel like can kind of channel a vintage vibe or a classic vibe. And I think that uh, that's kind of the direction that a lot of girls I feel like my age are getting where we really love authentic vintage and I absolutely, my favorite page to follow on Instagram is, is Victory Violet because I love her aesthetic, everything about her aesthetic. I love her makeup, her hair, her hair color, her clothing, love her outfit posts and I'm so inspired by them. But I don't necessarily see myself in those clothes because I do love pieces, but I also know that it's not really necessarily attainable to me and also um, not something that I would do every day. So there's that. I really enjoyed the Pinup Companions video in this um, for this tag because she always adds such humor to hers, but it's kind of what inspired me to do this, so thank you for that, Rachel. Um, but yeah, so here's my little journey through my vintage style discovery. The first thing that I thought was interesting to point out, or that should be pointed out, is that I have always obsessively loved classic cinema. Um, ever since I was a little girl, my favorite movies were black and white. My first crush was Ricky Nelson, and this is hilarious because Ricky Nelson was dead. <laughs> but I used to look at these pictures of him in these rock and roll like books, archive books that my dad had, and I just thought he was so good looking and nobody modern at that time period even held a candle to him ever. So um, really interesting because that is something that I feel like has always been a part of me. And when I went back to like the earliest photos, um, I'm looking down at my phone because I have my photos that I was going to go through on my phone. And they're really funny. Um, but looking back at like, for instance, my high school pictures, um, I loved Marilyn Monroe hair <laughs> when I was in high school. And I wanted my hair to be big. And in the 90s, we used what they called wrap, not wrap, snap and go, lock and roll rollers. I'll post a picture. Do y'all recognize these? These are called lock and roll rollers. They made your hair super kinky curly. And if you brushed your hair upside down and then teased it out at the sides, it was like, whoom. So this is the picture that you see here. It is my, um, <laughs> my uh, high school graduation pictures. Yes, we all did the like mirror. Yeah, it was real bad. And usually there were neon lights. So um, this was my style in probably my 16, 17 year old self. I really liked the idea of being able to get as much volume as possible out of my hair because my hair was very, very thin and I had went bleach blonde at this time. I had had a huge color mishap and so we went bleach blonde to hide the mishap and that was when I was like, ooh, I should do Marilyn Monroe thing. So anyway, this was my take on a Marilyn Monroe thing. It's hilarious and no, it is nothing like Marilyn Monroe, but it is still somewhat inspired by her. Um, and I feel like that was kind of the direction I was going with anyway. The makeup is purely 90s. That's just the way the makeup looked at that time. It was awful. There was a whole lot of this like 
extending the eyeshadow from here all the way up to here in the 80s and 90s, I used to take a brush or a or foam applicator and just like put the dark color all the way along this outer side of your eye and then blend it. And it looked like you had this crazy shadow right here. You look at 80s makeup, it's hilarious. Um, 80s and 90s. So those are my graduation pictures. And then uh, just to kind of give you a general idea of where I went from there, I was very, very into trends when I got married. I got married when I was 19. So I'll show you a wedding photo. My wedding whole get up was inspired by the Princess Bride. Um, um, I, I wanted like little springy curls like that were long and loose. I went barefoot and I had, I designed my dress myself and it had like the bell sleeve that went over the outside of the long sleeve. Anyway, it was partly inspired by Julie Andrews in uh, in Sound of Music. I loved the long drapiness of her dress with the long sleeves and the veil and so it was partly inspired by that but it was also partly inspired by Buttercup from the Princess Bride. So that was the direction I headed. But as far as my everyday style goes I was very into grunge. I wore a lot of cut-off flannel shirts and I wore men's pants and sometimes I would wear these little cut-off shirts that had like showed my abdomen because that was all in and popular especially if you wore big huge men's pants to have like a little short top on. I don't know. And my hair was parted straight in the middle and long and stringy. Very, very, um, I loved Kate Moss. I loved her style. So that whole look was really popular in the early 90s and I did totally, totally latch onto it. Mid 90s when I got married, I was still into that. I did a lot of baby doll dresses and knee socks. Here's a picture of me on my honeymoon. And yes, <laughs> that's me on my honeymoon. My hair was super long, straight, red. That was when I first went red. Um, and we were at Disney World. That's the big mushroom is from that Honey, I Shrunk the Kids playground. But I was wearing a baby doll dress and knee socks and, and I would wear Doc Martens up high. That was my style. After I'd been married a while, I got really into the real stripy highlights and the layers and lots of trendy stuff. I remember um, bell bottoms and boot cut jeans were really popular around the mid to late 90s. So I went through all of that and I really stayed very, very attached to trends. Um, the next picture is a picture of me at the zoo when I was about, well, it would have been probably around 2003 or four. And that's when I first decided to try short bangs. And it had never occurred to me to try short bangs before. I, um, I didn't really think they would flatter me, but I started getting really into the idea of the short bangs, just looking at pictures of girls and stuff that I, um, hairstyles that were popular at that time period. There were some girls that had some really short bangs, but they weren't blunt cut. They were actually like jaggedy bangs. So this is what I was doing. I was doing a lot of braids and trendy casual clothing and my hair was cut in braids and bangs for the first time. I didn't wear hardly any makeup. I was very, very natural. I mean, we, we also got the internet along this time period. so. The internet was a huge deal and that was made a lot of things accessible um we got it late but we you know we were just late at that and i started discovering retro reproduction and whenever i discovered that it totally made a big difference in how i felt about what my personal style was trying to say and i wanted to start investing in some pieces so i went to pinupgirlclothing.com and i bought a couple of pieces i bought a dress this dress right here <laughs> I loved this dress. It was not very flattering on me. And now that I look at it in pictures, it was actually quite awful. But my bangs were getting a little better. They were more blunt. And I went back to blonde for a little while and my bangs were a little bit more blunt. Um, and I started feeling like I was kind of getting into the Betty Page thing. And I also love to wear my hair blunt bangs up in combs. I still do that. I still love that style. And you can see it right here. Hardly any makeup. I was not doing winged eyeliner yet. And the top that I'm wearing is actually from Venus Swimwear, but I still wear this top. I love this top. It's back in 2006 is when I bought it. it has a little scarf tie right here and it looks really cute with circle skirts and it's got a little off the shoulder thing going on. So this was kind of the vibe I was going for in, the two in 2006 with my blonde hair. And then I think the next year or so my bangs grew out and I started to wanting to look a little bit more classic and I started waving my hair a little bit. This was around 2007. And again, you can see my skin and my face is very, very natural. I'm not doing really anything. And all the clothing I'm wearing was I think from The Gap, but it still had a little bit of a classic vibe and I loved that about it. Um, and then um, in late 2007, I went to 
Las Vegas with my husband. And before we went to Las Vegas, we knew there was going to be this car show there. And I had seen a lot of the girls wore retro clothing and I didn't have very much. So I bought a stop staring outfit, this dress that I'm wearing in this picture. It was the first piece that I bought that fit me like a glove and I loved it. And that was when I realized, okay, this is what I want to do all the time. And so I started playing with more hairstyles. Um, in this picture, I'm wearing my hair back in combs and a topsy tail in the back. And for some reason, I thought that was like the best hair hairstyle in the world for me. I was so excited. I got so into it. And then I also went to that car show that weekend and I met Sabina Kelly and Heidi Van Horn and, Horn and um, Melinda Miles, who were all pinup models. And they were the most beautiful girls I'd ever seen in my whole life, in real life. I mean, they were so gorgeous. And I took a picture with them and I was in the pinup competition. Don't even ask me why I did that, never again. Um, and the dress I was wearing in this picture is from Stop Staring and I liked it a lot too. It was like a kind of a bombshell style with uh, polka dots on it and a lot of stretch. A whole lot of stretch in most of this stuff. Yeah, spring of, of the next year, 2007 I guess, I went to Las Vegas again with my husband. This time we went to the Viva Las Vegas Weekender. This was the first time I had gone to this. Um, and so I guess actually this is 2007. The pictures from before were from 2006. So I think I was a year off. Anyway, um, this was my favorite picture I had ever taken of, had taken of myself. I felt beautiful in this picture. It is a motherhood maternity top because I was pregnant, four months pregnant with my son in this picture. I had my hair newly uh, strawberry red and I had put, my bangs had grown out to a nice length and I had my hair back in combs like I always did. Um, I was wearing a flower and I had bought myself a parasol and I had cuffed my jeans and put on some espadrilles with them and I felt so pretty. And that's when I was like, okay, that's never going back from this now. I had my little horn rimmed um, sunglasses and being pregnant, of course, I also felt like there was a little bit of a glow and I just really, really was happy with how I looked at that time period. So I never went back from it. Um, in 2008, we went again and I took my baby boy with me. He was six months old at the time. And this is a picture from that one. This was my first attempt at a poodle hairstyle. It looks terrible. I had no idea it looked so bad at the time, but when I looked at these pictures and zoomed in, I was like, oh my God. But this little play suit was just a rep reproduction play suit that I found super cheap on some website. Um, and then around 2008, late 2008 is when I did my videos. I started making my videos and doing my channel and then I really started working on vintage hair. Um, I did a lot of tutorials for with my hair um, blonde and I used a whole lot of hot rollers at this time period, not realizing that wet sets were the way to go because unfortunately hot rollers did not hold on my hair. Um, but this was an example of a style that I would wear <clears throat> all the time. The off the, to off the shoulder kind of bad girl top from Daddy O's with the cinch belt and the skirt, pencil skirt, and then my hair um, hot rolled. And to some, event, some effect, it, it had sort of a wave bombshell look to it. Um, later on that same year, I think I went back to red on top of the blonde. So it was a bright, bright, crazy red. And as you can see, I'm starting to use wet sets now. So my hair is looking a little better in the humidity. This was a picture taken, I think on my anniversary in 2008. So a little bit later on. And, um, but anyway, in 2010, I got pregnant and then I carried my vintage style through my pregnancy. Here's a picture of me at a car show and I was wearing my hair in a snoot and it actually looked better than it looks in this picture, but I was really proud of myself as I was starting to do a lot more victory rolls and things like that and just getting a lot more comfortable with vintage style in general. Um, the round, then 2011, we went back to the Rockabilly Weekender and I had my baby girl with me. She was three months old when we went. It was so fun with a baby, believe it or not. Can't believe I did that. And I had this idea that I wanted to have a cherry doll face streak. So my hair was still red, but I had blonde streaks in the front. And I really loved the way it looked with, um, with barrel curls and stuff like that. Um, in 2012, I completely started to that was when I felt like I really got into retro reproduction that was better quality because I started working for Whirling Turban. Whirling Turban has the most beautiful, authentic retro reproduction clothing. And because I worked for them, I had a lot of pieces that I got in compensation for my, for my um, job. It was important to me to start channeling a more authentic vintage vibe at that point because I felt like I represented Whirling Turban and I wanted to look my best whenever I would go to events. So. This was a vintage whirling turban jumpsuit. Um, 
my hair went back to blonde, but I still was using wet sets almost predominantly. And it really just kind of shows you how that the, I think everybody gets to that point where they're at that traditional vintage, that vintage, um, that traditional vintage look where they really want everything to look a lot more traditional. And so that was kind of where I was going through 2012, 2013. Um, especially when I was working for Whirling Turbine, I felt like I owed it to the brand to have as much of an authentic vibe as possible. And I'm still glad I did that because it was really, really super fun. And it was really fun to play with hairstyles that were traditional but also simple. Around 2014-15, I started to really play around with the 1960s era stuff because of the advent of the Nashville Boogie and I started playing around with false hair. I feel like I got pretty good at incorporating false hair into some crazy updos and I really loved the Western feel of those. I also got it I had wild hair to get myself a pixie and I did as most of you know I got this pixie just merely for the point of having it at one time or just having it and then also growing it out. So I could show you how to get a pixie and not be afraid to grow it out and style it as you grow it out. So it went from a pixie to a Louise Brooks bob <clears throat> and then just to traditional 1950s kind of short hair. Um, my clothing style never really changed. I still love to mix vintage pieces with rep reprodu reproduction and modern. This dress by um, Retrospect is still one of my very favorite dresses. So I really, really still like to mix together vintage and modern. And I'm really, really digging the Western vibe, so I've invested in quite a few uh, vintage Western dresses. So that's kind of where I'm at now. Um, I still love classic style, and I still love traditional, really, truly authentic traditional vintage, but I love to mix modern pieces in with it and keep it a little more casual. And I also like to wear um, actual vintage on occasion. <clears throat> I've, I'm not really tied down to any particular style. I still wear t-shirts and jeans sometimes, and I wear my hair like this most of the time. I set it maybe once a week. Um, it's a little too long to do much with right now, so it's really not that big a deal to just wear it like this. And I wear it like, you know, in a ponytail at work most of the time and just wear classic black threads because I'm Clinique and I have to wear black anyway. But hopefully that was not too cumbersome. I feel like it was less exciting than I thought it might be. <laughs> But I hope that you guys uh, enjoyed it, and I'm I'm excited to see where I go from here. I don't I don't anticipate things changing much for me. I like I said I don't have a really big clothing budget, so if I do get pieces, they're usually few and far between, and so you'll see a lot of the same pieces pop up that I've been wearing for years, and I have no problem with that. If I feel good in it, I feel good in it. I just have to try to keep it in good shape. Um, but yeah, continue to post these videos, girls, because I'm really into it. I love watching the evolution of your vintage style and seeing where you're at right now, where you've settled, um, or where you think you might be heading. I noticed a lot of girls that were really into the pinup scene and the vintage scene at one time have kind of gone almost the punk route and are going and getting a little bit more edgy in their look, and I think that's totally fine if that's what they want to do, and I enjoy following them still. Um, and then some girls have gone almost a little bit more um, casual 60s, 70s, in their vintage aesthetic, which I think is cool too. So yeah, and I think it's exciting to kind of go back through your photos and see where you were and whether or not you might want to revisit that again. But all right, enough of that.